This is Ecotricity's Ecotech Roundup Show from Aotearoa's first and only climate positive certified renewable electricity provider. We only source from wind, hydro and solar and we are the leading supplier of electricity to EVs in Aotearoa. Switch today at ecotricity.co.nz. Welcome back to another roundup of news from the world of clean cars and green energy. Thanks for joining me. We start with a story that's been doing the rounds online this week with varying amounts of breathless coverage. Tesla Cybertrucks are apparently rusting. Some, not all, Tesla Cybertruck owners in areas where there's been recent rain are starting to report rust spots on their new trucks, something which you might assume a Cybertruck would be immune to since stainless steel isn't meant to to rust. But without going too deep into metallurgy, there are many different types of stainless steel out there and while stainless steel does resist rust, it can still get surface rust. There are plenty of theories going about discussing the problem, including air particulate pollution, that may have settled on the exterior of affected vehicles. But in its owner's manual, Tesla says that owners need to clean off bugs and other road residue immediately, otherwise the finish might be tarnished. Chevrolet made a surprise announcement relating to its upcoming Equinox EV, the cheapest car it's going to build on its Ultium platform to date. Confirmed this week, the Chevy Equinox EV will start from US$34,995, including mandatory destination fees. And while that's the same price Chevrolet promised late last year, what's new is the fact that the Equinox EV will now be eligible for the full US federal tax credit, meaning that the effective price to get behind the wheel will be as low as US$27,495 assuming that is that the buyer qualifies for federal tax incentives. For that, you'll get an estimated 319 miles, 513 kilometres of range, and an entry-level 1LT front-wheel drivetrain. A super interesting, quite nerdy set of figures from the European Automobile Manufacturers Association, or ACEA for short, shows that there's quite a bit of variation across the EU when it comes to electric truck and bus adoption. In its latest publication, the ACEA notes that 5.2% of all medium-sized trucks across Europe had a plug last year up 229.4% on the previous year, while 1% of all new heavy goods vehicles were electric. It also shows that while Germany dominated registrations of both heavy-duty and medium-duty electric commercial vehicles, as well as electric buses, within and outside the EU, the Netherlands, Spain, Denmark, the UK, Norway and Switzerland also showed significant growth in electric commercial vehicle adoption. However, in Central and Eastern European countries, there was a noticeably lower uptake of EVs, showing there's still a lot of work to be done in commercial vehicle fleets across Europe. While LFP battery packs are less power and energy dense than NCM-based lithium-ion battery packs, they're quickly becoming the preferred choice for many new EVs. To date, Chinese firms have sat at the forefront of LFP battery development with CATL and BYD considered to be leaders, with even Tesla buying battery cells from both firms for its cars. This week, access to LFP battery cells became a whole lot easier for many other automakers after Borg Warner signed a new deal with BYD's battery unit, Fin Dreams, to license its LFP blade battery packs in Europe, America and the Asia-Pacific regions. The deal is a major coup for the Tier 1 parts supplier, whose current clients include Ford, General Motors and many other well-known brands. This, frankly, is a massive deal. Multiple news outlets reported on a Tesla crash back in 2022 that claimed the life of a drunk Tesla employee when his car crashed into a tree and caught fire with him at the wheel. According to incident reports from the time of the crash, the sole survivor of the accident reportedly told first responders that the driver was using a, quote, auto drive feature on the Tesla, end quote, and that, quote, it just ran straight off the road, end quote. Since then, a full investigation has tried to ascertain if the car was in fact under manual or semi-autonomous control. But in a public statement on X this week, Elon Musk disputed the reporting, stating that the employee did not have FSD downloaded on his car and adding that had the car been operating in FSD, the accident, quote, probably would not have happened, end quote. 
However, data obtained by the Washington Post seems to suggest that FSD was, quote, active and included with the vehicle, end quote. And while data from collisions should automatically report it to Tesla, and Tesla did report the incident to NHTSA, crash data that would prove categorically what happened appears to be missing. I should note the driver was three times over the legal limit, and I should also reiterate that no semi-autonomous vehicle is fully autonomous, and you should absolutely not drink and drive. We love electric bicycles and think they could really help our transition away from fossil fuels. But now we've got a trio of e-bike stories we've kind of lumped together, all of which relate to e-bike safety. First, Dutch police have unveiled a new portable rolling road or dynamometer that they can use to test the legality of e-bikes they suspect are in violation of the nation's e-bike laws on maximum power and speed. In recent years, e-bike collisions have increased, with a majority of them involving e-bikes that have been legally modified for higher top speeds. Meanwhile, over in California, the state has begun considering a new e-bike law that would ban children under the age of 12 from riding e-bikes and require those over 12 who do not have a car license to take an online course and obtain a special ID license before being allowed to ride. On the other side of the US, New Jersey is also considering a new bill that would require all e-bike riders to get insurance and register their rides before taking them on the road. In order to keep your electric car's battery pack healthy, it's generally accepted that the battery pack needs to be kept between 20 and 80% full unless you really do need that extra range on a long distance trip. But just as wisdom on EV fast charging has changed in recent years, it used to be thought that fast charging was damaging to battery packs, but now evidence suggests the opposite, there's now a new study suggesting that leaving your car's battery pack empty for a while could be good for it. But as is usually the case, detail matters. Enter a new study from Stanford University that says that allowing a lithium metal battery pack to rest at or near empty could dramatically improve its lifespan. But what is important to underline here is that the study isn't about the lithium ion batteries we find in most modern EVs today. It's relating to next generation lithium metal batteries, which as yet are not found in most EVs on the market. As is usual, context is queen. Electric vertical takeoff and landing company Joby Aviation, one of a number of companies rushing to bring electric air taxis to reality, has just signed a deal with Dubai's Road and Transport Authority to start air taxi services there by 2026. Dubai has long been incredibly keen to establish EV toll services and frankly has the financial clout to make it happen, which is why so many EV toll firms are flocking there to set up operations. Joby is just the latest in a line of companies that have set their sights on Dubai, and frankly, it's going to be interesting to see just which firm succeeds in being first to market. While some companies are focusing heavily on fully autonomous operations, it is also worth noting that Joby, based in California, has already completed successful flight tests with a pilot on board, and while its initial vehicles appear smaller than the six-seat models it's promising for Dubai, it is frankly truly impressive to see how quickly this method of transit is evolving. We often cover new studies on this channel that make us go, well, duh. And today we got just such a survey from the Auto Pacific EV Consumer Insight Study, which has concluded what we already knew. People want nice EV charging stops with amenities. It polled over 7,200 people who were either looking for an EV as NX car or said they were seriously considering one. And it discovered that most people it polled want EV charging sites that are basically identical to gas stations with all of the amenities that includes. They want a windshield wash station, a restroom and a place to check their car's tyre pressure and all of the other things that internal combustion engine drivers get without a second thought. Luckily, commercial charging station operators around the world are waking up to this need. And I have to give a shout out to the Harris Ranch in California, which has offered all of the above and more for EV charging stations for a really long time. After LFP battery packs, the next big holy grail for the EV industry is solid state battery packs, which not only promise incredible energy density, but also incredible charging capabilities. And this week, we learned that two of the world's largest battery companies, BYD and CATL, have joined forces with NIO, Calb B, 
Eve Energy and Gotian High Tech to establish a new collaborative platform called the China All Solid State Battery Collaborative Innovation Platform, or CASIP for short. This new joint alliance, spearheaded by the Chinese government, aims to rapidly develop and commercialize next generation solid state battery tech for use in future EVs. This could cause some significant upset globally, though, so. Frankly, this new partnership could cause some significant upset in the auto industry globally, so watch this space. Before we get to the last two stories, I have a quick question. Are you in the market for a new EV? Because if you are and you live in Aotearoa, you should very much check out our very own buyer's guide at ecotricity.co.nz. It is packed with all the information you need to pick a car that's right for you. And it has plenty of details about vehicles you can get, available details about daily life with an EV and so much more. So follow the link below and start your journey today. When the auto industry in North America announced it was going to transition away from CCS Type 1 and towards NAX, we all had some questions about the process. And one of those thoughts was, will they just rely on Tesla superchargers? And then this week, that question was answered with a resounding no, as a bunch of US car companies announced a new charging network called IONA, a new joint venture between BMW, GM, Honda, Hyundai, Kia, and Mercedes-Benz, as well as Stellantis. As a consequence, Stellantis, of course, has confirmed that it will be switching to NAX, but unlike other automakers making the switch, it doesn't yet have a deal with Tesla to gain access to the supercharger network, which might suggest people with Jeeps or Dodge EVs or other Stellantis models might only be able to use non-Tesla operated NAX charging infrastructure. So watch this space. For years, and I do mean years, many automotive journalists, mainstream media outlets and auto executives have pushed back against the battery electric vehicle switch, stating that hydrogen fuel cell cars would be a far better choice. And for more than a decade, you've been able to lease and in some cases buy select hydrogen fuel cell cars in California. At least some of our viewers have done just that. But this week, Shell announced a sudden closing of all of its consumer facing hydrogen refueling stations in California, stating that its aim was to focus on, quote, value over volume and prioritizing capital investment in areas where we have a distinct competitive advantage, end quote. It's not clear if Shell means gasoline by that, but given the backpedaling the auto industry has been doing on EVs, I wouldn't be surprised. Shell says it's going to keep operating its commercial hydrogen fuel cell stations for big rigs, but so far, seven hydrogen stations have been closed and Shell is looking to divest its Torrance, California location. Given Torrance, California is where Honda's American headquarters is based, I'll leave you to guess what is likely to happen to that station next. And on that note, we are done for the day. Before I go, though, do make sure that you've hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on the latest in EV news from this channel. And of course, if you haven't switched yet, it's time to switch to Aotearoa's first and only climate positive certified renewable electricity provider. It is super easy to make the switch. And in doing so, you'll get the nation to wean itself off dirty energy and onto clean green power that will keep the land beautiful for generations to come. I will be back next week as usual, but in the meantime, check out other great content on this channel, including from the lovely Gavin Kiwi EV Shoebridge. He was off in Australia recently doing Fully Charged Live, so uh, make sure you catch up. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. Have an amazing rest of the day. Kakite! See you next time.